Hello students in this video we will practice some questions on the topic work energy and power this chapter is very important for your exams and these questions are for your own practice they are in line with the competitive exams so without further ado let's begin with question number 1 a car of mass 1000 kg is traveling up a hill of 1 in 49 with the engine working at a constant power of 40 if the resistance offered to the motion is of 800 then the maximum speed the car attain up the hill is what now we know that for maximum speed the power supplied by the motor must be equal to what the power consumed by friction and the gravity forces that is power equals to power by friction plus power by your gravity forces Now let's understand what is the meaning of this one in forty nine. Basically, this means that the height of slope is one meter and the base of slope is what forty nine meters. All right. So we know that power friction is nothing but force into V. That is P equals to F of friction into V. and we know that power of gravity that is p of g is equals to mgh upon delta t now from the given data we know that force of friction is nothing but 800 newtons right and mass is nothing but 1000 kg so what is going to be delta t delta t is going to be nothing but under root of 49 square plus 1 square upon v and this is actually equals to 49 upon v now substituting these this value in equation number 1 which equation this equation which we were talking about in the beginning so if i'm going to substitute these values in this equation then it's going to be what it's going to be 40000 equals to 800 times v plus 100 Actually, thousand into nine point eight into one upon forty nine by v. Now, if I'm going to solve this equation, then the value of v is going to be nothing but forty meters per second. So the answer of this question is going to be this. That is forty meters per second. I hope you understood how to solve this question. So let's move on to question number two. Question number two says. that a block of mass m this is the block that is given and the mass of this block is m so the block of mass m starts from rest and it slides down a frictionless semi circular track from height h as shown so this is height h and when it reaches the lowest point of the track it collides with a stationary piece of putty also having mass of what small m so mass of both this block and this piece both of them is small m and the height from which the block is actually sliding is what h now if the block and the putty stick together and continue to slide then what is going to be the maximum height that the block putty system could reach now the basic thing is that when this block is sliding it's going to collide with this and then they are going to move a further so we just have to find out the height the maximum height that this block and putty system can actually attain now we know that the velocity of the block just before hitting the putty we can actually find this velocity by what energy conservation that is kinetic energy initial and potential energy initial so i'm going to write i for initial here this is going to be equal to what kinetic energy of final position plus potential energy of the final position in the equation so if i'm going to substitute the values i know that kinetic energy is zero whereas potential energy is nothing but mgh and then potential energy is zero but kinetic energy is what half mv square and this is zero so this means that v is nothing but it is under root of 2gh now let the common velocity of both the block and the putty be what v dash so what is v dash this is the common velocity of the block and the putty so at collision we need to do what balance of momentum so if i'm going to do balance of momentum it's going to be what mv equals to mv dash plus mv dash right 
Why? Because the common velocity of both the block and this putty is V dash, whereas their masses are also same. So this is going to be the equation which we attain. So when I'm going to substitute the value of V in this, we will get what? We will get under root of 2GH equals to 2V dash. How did I reach this equation? I just have to solve this equation that is MV equals to 2MV dash and this equation that is V equals to under root of 2GH. And finally, I get this equation. Now from this equation, I can find V dash, right? So what is the value of V dash? The value of V dash is going to be nothing but under root of GH by 2. So this is going to be the value of V dash. Now what we need to do, we need to conserve the energy again so that we can actually find the maximum height which is attained by the block and putty system. So for that, again, I can write that kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial is going to be equal to kinetic energy final and potential energy final. So to write that, I'm just going to erase a few things from here. Uh, we know the value of V dash, right? So that is exactly what we require for the next set of equation. All right. So for the next set of equation, I can again say that kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial is going to be nothing but kinetic energy final plus potential energy final, right? So now here what I can write is that kinetic energy initial is going to be nothing but half of 2mv dash square, right? Because now it's a system. So the mass is going to be mass of this block and mass of this putty, which is going to be 2m. And that should be equal to, now this kinetic energy has to convert it into the potential energy. That is nothing but 2mgh dash, correct? So when I'm going to solve this, it's going to be nothing but half gh by 2 equals to gh dash. And from here, I can basically find that h dash is nothing but h by 4. So the maximum height that the block and the putty system could attain is nothing but h by 4, that is option A. So let's move on to another question, that is question number 3. Now question number 3 states that there are two blocks A and B of masses 2M and M. So these are these two blocks, that is block A of mass 2M and B of mass M and there is this spring which is there. And these are connected by a massless and inextensible string. So this whole system is suspended by a massless spring as it's shown in the figure. Now the magnitudes of acceleration of A and B immediately after the string is cut are going to be what? Now we know that the extension in the spring in equilibrium is going to be nothing but Kx equals to 3mg, right? Hence the tension in the string is going to be what? 3mg minus 2mg equals to mg, correct? Now when the string is cut, the force on B is going to be mg, hence the acceleration is going to be what? Acceleration of A is going to be g. Why? Because the force that is being applied on your B is nothing but, uh, the force which is applied on B is nothing but mg. Now force on A is going to be what? I'm going to write the equation that is related to the force that is applied on A. So the force that is on A is nothing but Kx minus capital Mg equals to 3Mg minus 2Mg. Now, now 3Mg minus 2Mg is going to be what? Mg, correct? And this force is going to be what? In the upward direction. So the acceleration of A is going to be nothing but it's going to be acceleration of A equals to Mg by 2Mg. That is going to be nothing but G by 2. Here it's going to be mg by 2m. So here g is not going to come. So the acceleration of a is going to be what? mg by 2m. Hence the correct answer is going to be option number b that is g by 2 and g. So these are going to be the accelerations of a and b immediately after the string is cut. I hope you have understood this question as well. So now let's move on to question number fourth. Question number four states that there is this bullet of mass 20 grams which is moving with the velocity v and it is embedded into a block of mass 10 kgs. Now as a result of this collision, the block and the bullet rise to a height of what? 25 centimeters from the equilibrium position. So I have to find the original velocity that is v of the bullet. 
Now let's visualize the situation which is going on in there. So there is this block, right? And there is this bullet. So the initial position is going to be like this. Then after the collision, the position is going to be that this bullet is actually inside this block. So this is going to be the position. So we actually have to find the original velocity, small v of the bullet. Now, we have to use momentum conservation to solve this question. So we know that mv is equal to nothing but capital M plus small m and v dash, right? So it's going to be v dash. Now we know that v dash is nothing but mv upon m plus m. This came out from where? This equation that is momentum conservation. Now I know that the kinetic energy delta Ke at what? A equals to delta Pe that is the potential energy at B. Right. So if I'm going to solve and put all the values in this equation, it's going to be what? It's going to be, let me just erase this. We know the value of V dash. So when I put the values in the equation, it's going to be half m small m v dash equals to whole square equals to what m plus m gh, correct? So now v dash square is going to be nothing but 2gh and I know that mv upon m plus m whole square equals to nothing but 2 into 10 into 0 0.5, 0 0.25 actually. So it's going to be 2 into 10 into 0 0.25. Let me write this again. So this is nothing but 0 0.25. So when I'm going to substitute the values in this, I know that what is mass, what is V, what is capital M, what is small m. So I'm going to just put the values on this. So it's going to be 20 into 10 to the power minus 3V. 10 to the power minus 3v upon 10 plus 20 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square equals to 5. Now when I'm going to solve this equation, it's going to be nothing but 0.02v upon 10.02 that is nothing but under root of 5. So when I'm going to solve this equation, the value of V is going to be what? I'm going to write it here. So the value of V will be, the value of V is going to be 1120 meters per second. So how did we find the value of V? From this equation, correct? So the original velocity V of the bullet is going to be what? 1120 meters per second, that is option number A. I hope you understood this question. Now let's move on to the last question of the day. So the last question states what? It states that a particle is released, that a particle is released from the top of a quarter circle of radius 1.6 meters and it stops at point C, three meters away from what point B? So this is point B, this is point C and this is point A. And distance between B and C is what? 3 meters, whereas the radius is what? 1.6 meters. Now, if the friction is present only on the horizontal surface, that is only on this surface, then we need to find the coefficient of friction that is mu. So, as the particle is released, the edge from the edge of the circle, or all its potential energy is going to be converted into your kinetic energy. So the equation which we need to write is what mgh equals to 0 0.5 mv1 square. So v1 square is going to be nothing but 2gh. Now this is going to be the initial speed on the horizontal surface, correct? So final velocity minus initial velocity is going to be nothing but 2as. So final speed is zero, we know that. So this equation is going to turn into what? Minus two GH equals to two AS, where A is nothing but minus GH upon S. Now negative sign, negative sign indicates what? Deacceleration. Therefore, 
mu m g equals to m into minus a and mu equals to a by g where this is going to be g h upon s upon g and when i'm going to solve this is going to be what this is going to be h by s and h by s is nothing h by s equals to 1.6 by 3 that is 0 0.533 that is option number a so with this we have reached the end of our discussion i hope you people understood all the questions now you can go to edurev and see all the amazing documents and tests of this respective chapter try to do these and thank you very much